Hello and welcome to our channel. Hello, guys. To think. Casper, you look a bit sad. I am very, very sad, actually. And do you know why? Yeah, someone have broken a promise to you. <laughs> exactly. Well, I, as many of you guys out there, bought No Man's Sky. This incredible space exploration game. Beautiful game. And it is, well, it, it does have some good features, I would say. Mm -hmm. But, the matter of fact is that Sean Murray, you know, the lead developer and head of Hello Games, actually promised quite a few things that didn't turn out to be quite true when playing the game. I want to just interrupt you. It's not to bash on Sean Murray. He is a good guy. He's a good developer. One of the best programmer and designer in gaming history. He's definitely skilled and he had a great idea. So. Yeah. This has just been a, a clusterfuck where you should hire a PR guy to do the introduction and then just have Sean Murray to show some of the features. But yeah, not... or maybe be 100% clear what the game actually really will be, will be containing and mm. what they will be implementing and uh, well they wasn't quite sure about that but we will try to talk about the various aspects of that and i think you will start right yeah um we will do this in short points we will make a review video just so you know which will be a lot longer because i am you have a lot to say i know that it will yeah. be kind of short where we just talked about yeah it. so um short terms planetary physics um the planet does not in real life go around, uh, have an orbit around themselves, and they certainly does not stand still. And these are pretty immersive breaking points uh, for a consumer standpoint. And Sean Murray did promise a solar system with real life effects, so a, a planet would have an orbit around the sun. But this didn't happen. And this is actually also have another problem with the day-night cycles. It's just a light bar which is not that immersive. It is a light box. Yeah. That's that. <laughs> yeah. Now it's my turn and I will talk a little bit about ship classes. Mm. Well, when playing the game, you very fast realize that there's no real ship classes. Well, Sean Murray talked about exploration, trading, fighting and gathering and all these various classes. The only difference between the ships is probably or basically just inventory slots. You do have various designs of the ships and they do look quite nice, uh, even though the internal of the ship is very similar as well. But inventory slots and design is, is the only thing really, so there's no real class. No. And for me that was disappointing. Again, a little small thing, asteroid landings. We were not promised, but it was suggested that you could land on an asteroid and maybe mine it. Well, I try to land on an asteroid, as many players it's did. Impossible. It is impossible. You just get bolted away or you destroy the asteroid. And um, Sean Murray would directly ask about this where he said yes. So that's not a good point for me. So uh, what do you have, my friend? Well, my next thing is factions. What he did talk quite a lot about is the fact that you can join faction in space so you see these large spaceships and you can join them well actually when playing the game you realize that this interaction is very 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 limited well in fact you can't really join anything so there's no large scale of battles uh, well in space and you can't even destroy a spaceship either uh, a space station either sorry you can't destroy spaceships you do sometimes see pirates uh, attacking you but the faction system is just not implemented in the game at all so uh, not sure to... yeah next thing we are going to talk about are planets and in in in, in the main point sand planets when uh, sean murray uh, talked about these planets he, he, he suggested that you can maybe find a sand planet or directly water planet where it's only water and sand, where the creatures will be there. And from the trailer, you actually see a sand planet with a big sand. It looks awesome. It looks so cool. <laughs> and we haven't met this planet yet. And we have seriously doubt that it actually exists. From what we can gather, and we read a bit of on Reddit and other pages similar to that, 
and no one has really found this sand planet, so I doubt that it is implemented in the game at all. There's a theory going around there's only 10 main planets with some subtle differences, but we will get to that in our review. Hmm, exactly. That leads me to the next part, with, which is in-atmosphere battles. Oh, well, yeah. that's not existing either. I'm so mad about this. <laughs> the only way to battle, as I talked about, you can be pirates when you fly up into space. Uh, so that's one way. And the battle system on the ground, of course, where you can fight sentinels and you can fight animals. You can also fight sentinels in space if you if, uh, try to destroy one of their freighters. Ah, yeah, okay, that's right, that's right. But um, you can't really fight in atmosphere while flying at all. And that's a really, really big disappointment. Side parts is the freighters completely stand still when the teleports in. They have no movement. <laughs> so that was a deal breaker for me. So, uh, your next thing? Well, uh, it's about hacking. And you said, hacking, you, you cannot actually hack anything. You can have, have the Atlas map and maybe get into a door. Uh, but um, you, you, we were promised that you could ma maybe hack or destroy the Sentinels' manufactories. And you cannot actually hack them. The only way you can come in is destroy it by uh, knocking it with your pistol or destroying it with your grenade. And um, you should then guess that this should make the Sentinels pretty unhappy. And they get unhappy until you walk into the door. Then they forget all about you because that is so realistic. And more about that in, my, in our review. There's nothing less to say about that. <laughs> yeah, so no hacking. No That's hacking. for sure. Okay, now creature behavior. And I actually mm. think this is a pretty interesting topic because in the very, very first trailer we saw of the game, I was amazed. I was actually blown away. I thought, I have to buy this game. So it's a few years, years ago now. Uh, you clearly see that a giant, giant rhino-like creature is running towards these interlobe-like creatures. And you see them actually get scared and run away. So this is a very complex, I would say, creature behavior. Mm -hmm. And when playing your game, the game, you soon realize that this complex creature behavior is not there. Actually, there's not much of it at all. That's you don't see that odd. much creatures. That one, that's one thing. The other thing is that the creatures, well, <coughs> they're just standing around. Well, you can feed them a carbon, uh, and that's basically it. The interaction between the animals, well, I haven't seen anything of that. That's they're just standing there. So, uh, in that regard, I think there's a lack of meaning here. What's the purpose? And of course, well, it's a broken promise as well. I have actually a side point that you will get some nitpicks of a story, of a law, of why do you are there, why are you even on that planet for the first place. And you get uh, some of the manufacturers, I don't know if you've actually seen it, they are already broken into and they are infested with some alien yeah, creature. Yeah, yeah. What are these creatures? I also figured, wow, there must be something behind That is food. not. That no. is not. You no. never learn why. And I actually think this, you get told that if you explore enough, you can get a hidden history. But before I went completely apeshit to get to the middle of the universe, I actually tried to explore as much as I could on the planet. Get every waypoint, get every creature I could find and I couldn't find the hidden history. And I actually think you missed the reason why you should even go on. That's again for the review, sorry. But I had just that's, had to have this okay. And Then there's the interaction with other players. The only way to know how you look like is for another player to see you. Mm -hmm. That is actually a direct quote from Sean Murray. So, he did make it clear that you should not play No Man's Sky expecting that experience, you know, seeing another player, mm -hmm. since the universe is so big. But still, it was hovering between the lines that it, this might be possible, especially in regards to the quote I just said. And matter of the fact is that there's no multiplayer or any way to see another player. Actually, two <coughs> players met you know, <laughs> doing the very first day, but, well, you guessed it, they couldn't see each other, they couldn't really interact with each other, well, it was like the 
went there. So, this is not a part of the game. And before you guys say, well, it was a server problem and stuff like that, no, I don't believe it is. Because on the very first, I don't know, version of the game that they sent out, uh, you clearly see that they have actually put a sticker on the game case where you can see there's a multiplayer function. So, what does this tell us? Well, there's no multiplayer or any online-based interaction with other players at all. So you will never see how you look like. Never a big word. Well, they might add it in an update, but uh, I doubt that. But we will talk more about that later. Yeah, on the review. So, um, yeah, the final thoughts. You have been following this game more than I have. I actually have a pretty neutral standpoint to this because I actually refused to see any of these videos. So I actually think this have more than an impact on you than it have on me, mm. if you understand what I yeah, mean. Yeah, of course, of course. So I what was is... really looking forward to this. I waited for a game like this for many, many years, you know, to be able to go out and explore every single planet. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, I do not think that Sean Murray lied to promote the game or to earn a lot of money, you know. Uh, and trick the potential buyers, on purpose at least. I think he had an idea, a dream in his head. He really wanted to make this and he actually thought that he would be able to implement all this in the game, in the given time frame. I would say that that's also one of my points is you should never ask a developer to talk about a game as a PR person. Because even though it is an indie game, you should have a spoke person that knows what's in the game right now, so there can be no confusion about how this will work. He has been pretty vague in what is in the game. And when the game came out or when it got hacked, they actually ask the people not to share their videos. And I actually think the proof is in the pudding that they also knew it was not ready for go. Yeah, I think they knew it wasn't ready for go, but they chose to release it anyway. And that's, well, all fine and dandy in the way that they definitely, I believe, uh, had an idea or, well, it was in their plans to release updates where all these missing features would be a part of it. But since most of the fan base of the game has now been lost. People don't play it much anymore. I really much doubt that it will see these updates and therefore the game will probably remain the same as we are playing it right now. Yeah. I surely hope not. So I don't think we will get these added features, but I definitely think that when they released it, they figured, well, we will release an update where people will get all these missing features. You know, within a year, I don't know what the time frame was. So, why did all this happen? Well, I believe that Hello Games might have been a bit pressured from Sony, you know, releasing a game. And I also believe that all this lawsuit about trademarking the name Sky and all that nonsense also had an impact. So the focus on sitting down and developing the game might have shifted during this time. And that's of course really sad. I can say for sure that's the reason. It's not an excuse or anything like that. But, well, it might, yeah, that it might be why uh, some of the features aren't there that we talked about. My point is, this is an indie game. Has always been an indie game. Has never been started out to be more than an indie game. But because the firm of Sony maybe has bought it, it has given the creators more pressure than it was worth. Maybe they got some money and Sony said, you we better deliver. All this yeah, but we don't know. But there is some proof in the pudding that when they tried to move it a bit along, with the, I actually think it was two months, it was actually a concern to me, but also a bit, they love this game so much that they want it finished. Mm. But I actually rather wanted this as a Christmas gift with all these features than Getting they should it. have waited a year or something like that. Yeah. Really implemented all the things they talked about and then the game would have been just fine in my yeah. opinion. Then it would be worth the buck. Yeah. So basically this is a missed opportunity. But we still hope the best for Hello Games. 
and Sean Murray, of course. And we really hope that they will be able to, well, re-establish their brand and, of course, continue developing games as well. I would look forward for No Mind Sky too. Perfect. So uh, that's it, I guess. Yes. So and thank you for your time, guys. And, and uh, always to remember to, to think. think.